How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, the show where we talk everything Bears every day of the week completely uncut. Today in episode number 137 of Uncut, we're going to be discussing Morgan Moses. He earned a 80.6 grade by Pro Football Focus and was considered the sixth best right tackle in the league in 2020, and he is meeting with the Chicago Bears today on June 2nd. So we're going to be discussing whether or not the Bears should get a deal done here and what Moses future could look like in Chicago if he is brought in welcome back to the show guys looking for a double upload today uh we missed yesterday but we're going to get you guys two videos today uh as we continue to roll towards training camp we've got a lot to talk about I am your host Chris Malpe today I am joined on the right of me by my co-host Parth Shaw Parth what's going on what have you been up to recently yeah uh it's been a while since I've recorded uh, but I just moved I've been back home uh, working, I guess, just staying a little busy. It's nice to be on break, um, you know, just have, but here we are recording Bears content. Um, there should be a lot more news coming out now, you know, as workouts and OTAs and, uh, and all that stuff gets going. And uh, preseason football is not too far away also. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're really rolling into it and in a blink of an eye. I know you and I are going to be out there vlogging at training camp, uh, being back there and doing all that good stuff. But, you know, not much going on right now with OTAs because obviously a majority of the Bears are not participating. We learned that earlier this offseason. But there is some good news that the Bears, after the post-June 1 cuts, which included Kyle Fuller as well as Charles Leno Jr., they are sitting at just over $10 million in total cap space. So they've got some uh, room to make some moves here if they want. The only uh, rookie they've signed so far is Kairis Tonga. Obviously, have to pay guys like Tevin Jenkins and Justin Fields a lot of money. But they've been looking at some cornerbacks like Brashad Breland as well as Steven Nelson. And then they brought in Morgan Moses today uh, to talk. And he also met with the New York Jets earlier this week. But Moses received an 80.6 grade by Pro Football Focus. I said that a little bit earlier. That puts him in as the sixth best right tackle in the league in 2020, as well as the 15th best tackle in the entire league, including right and left tackles. Parth, he hasn't missed a game in five years. So if the Bears can get this done, uh, do you think they should try and bring in Moses here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this guy would make our offensive line one of the best in the league. Um, this Bears offensive line already is really good. If the Fetty starts at right tackle or if it turns out to be Borum, um, Hambright, Simmons, Bars, anyone who starts at right tackle, this offensive line is already really good. Um, but bringing in Moses uh, makes this offensive line top five, top seven in the league, I feel like. Um, there's a lot of talent there. Um, there will be young guys. There will be veterans. But this guy hasn't missed a game in five years, uh, and that's something you really appreciate at that level. Um, you know, uh, losing Charles Leno, uh, despite you know his ups and downs, he, one thing about him was he was always on the field. Um, and having a guy like Morgan Moses um, come in and replace, I guess, the other side of him, other right tackle position, um, but who's consistent and stays on the field is very important for the Bears. Yeah, we saw the Washington football team cut Moses because they saved $8 million from that. It was mostly a cap casualty move. They ended up signing, uh, obviously, Charles Leno, who the Bears let go of uh, this offseason to be their left tackle, and then drafted Samuel Cosme to be their right tackle. So Mm -hmm. they had no longer any need for Moses. And we saw the Bears, you know, this offseason try and work around some moves to try and get an offensive tackle. I know Trent Williams was someone that they had a couple of meetings with, but obviously his price was really high, uh, and he ended up back with the 49ers. So Moses would be an interesting one. You know, Parth, I I don't know about top five line in the league, but I think it would definitely solidify it. Uh, I think if you look at the line, you've got starting uh, Tevin Jenkins, uh, James Daniels, Sam Mustafer, Cody Whitehair, and Moses. Uh, I think that's a pretty solid line you've got going. So I would love to see the Bears bring in Moses if they can. I do think now that they cleared up this cap space that either signing a cornerback or someone like Morgan Moses on a cheap deal would be great. Um, so I would love to see that. And we're going to talk a little bit about Jermaine Effetti a little bit 
further down the road, but let's talk a little bit more about Moses because obviously you've got a couple people vying for the right tackle spot right now in Chicago, the two main ones. Probably Larry Borum, obviously a fifth-round pick. You'd hope that we could sit him and let him develop a little bit before you start getting into that role. And then Jermaine Fetty. Um, so if the Bears do bring in Moses Parth, do you think he's going to automatically be the starting right tackle in Chicago uh, across from Tevin Jenkins, who they'll move to left tackle? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Morgan Moses – is a very talented offensive lineman. Like you said, uh, PFF has him highly ranked. Um, not only that, he hasn't missed a start in five years. That's something I'm going to keep going back to because I think that's really important at that position. Um, and then having that stability, that veteran presence to help out Tevin Jenkins. You know, Jenkins uh, is going to be a rookie starting at left tackle. That's a pretty big position, um, pretty big shoes to fill right off the bat. Um, so, so having Morgan Moses there will definitely help. Jenkins out as if Fetty hasn't had much experiences at, at that tackle position compared to that guard position, I feel like. Yeah, and we'll talk about a Fetty a little bit later, but I think he would be great if you plugged him in as a backup swing at both guard yeah. and tackle. Uh, I exactly. think that would be a great position for him. But I absolutely think if the Bears got this deal done that Moses would be the starting right tackle. You mentioned it. It's nice to have a veteran presence there, someone to help Larry Borum out a little bit as well. Hopefully, eventually, one day we'll develop into that right tackle that the Bears want. And then you've also got Sam Mustafer at center. Uh, who's entering his second year uh, in the starting position, assuming that he gets that job, which I would assume he is, uh, with white hair and Daniels split out at the guards. So uh, I think Moses would be a great mentor uh, to Tevin Jenkins, someone who's going to be asked to fill some very big shoes on day one and hopefully earn that starting job. Uh, but Moses, I think, absolutely would solidify this line for David Montgomery, for whoever's starting at quarterback, Andy Dalton or Justin Fields, get them some good protection. And I think if we brought him in, we could see one of the best Bears lines we've seen uh, probably ever since we were born, Parth. I mean, not since like Roberto Garza, Olin Krutz, and those guys were around back in the day. Uh, and those guys are obviously legends, but we're a little too young to remember them uh, specifically well. But let's talk about Fetty a little bit before we close this one off. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode because obviously we're double uploading today. But let's talk about Fetty a little bit. I said it a little bit earlier. I think he would be a great swing guard and tackle, someone you can plug it at both positions. And I think he'd be a really good backup coming in, and we retain him on a, on a pretty reasonable deal. So if the Bears do bring in Moses, what type of role do you see Jermaine Fetty taking up uh, in 2021? I think you said it best. Uh, he would be a great uh, backup at guard and tackle. He can play both positions. And that's the thing about backups. You want them to be versatile. Um, you want them to be able to play multiple positions on that offensive line and be able to move around, um, to, to be able to have Fetty to move around. You can also move around Borum. Borum also can play guard and tackle. So having those two guys being able to move them around gives the Bears some pretty good uh, depth at that position, uh, which we haven't seen the Bears have offensive line depth in a really while, really long time. Um, you know, there's been times where we've seen them crumble at that position and it's led to a lot of struggles at the offensive level. Yeah, I mean, just like last year, we exactly. saw a couple of the and Bears. And the year before and the year Yeah, before Yeah, that. I mean, we saw last year the Bear, a couple of the Bears offensive linemen got COVID, and then you see guys like Arlington Hambride, Alex Bars, all have to step up for their first start against the yeah. Titans, and it turns into an absolute crapshoot, and the Bears can't score offensively. So I think getting some versatility, not only uh, with some good backups like Jermaine Fetty and Larry Borum, but also getting a really strong presence with the starting offensive line would be great. I would love to see the Bears bring in a cornerback as well. Um, but I think first priority for me is probably solidifying this line uh, just because I know what David Montgomery is capable of. He was the fifth best running back in yards in 2020. Uh, and clearly we need better protection. We saw it the last couple of years with Mitchell Trubisky as well as Nick Foles. If we can solidify the protection, get these guys some more time to throw, maybe they can be hitting their receivers more often, especially with someone like Justin Fields. And if Andy Dalton starts the season, he's definitely going to be someone that needs protection. So I think bringing in Moses probably takes priority over a cornerback in my mind. Parth, I don't know what you think about that. but I mean, I think it goes both ways, but I like the Moses idea just because it makes this offensive line one of the better offensive lines in the league. Um, like you said, you didn't think they would be top five, but I think they could get close to there just because of how talented these guys are. Yeah, and we were used to seeing Bears offensive line units that rank in the bottom five of the league. I'm not sure where they finished last year. I think they were around pretty average. Dave Montgomery obviously finished with a couple yep. good games in a row to get the top five in rushing. Um, 
but there's always going to be improvements needed to be made in the offensive line room. Uh, they obviously moved on from Massey and Leno, so it should be interesting to see if they can get Moses in Chicago. I think all signs are pointing towards it. It makes sense, but can they get the money right? Because it would be a great move, and I know there's some other teams interested in him. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode number 137 of Uncut. Episode 138 of Uncut will be coming out a little bit later tonight. Uh, I kind of previewed it a little bit earlier. We talked about signing some offensive linemen. Now we're going to be talking a little bit later uh, about signing some cornerbacks. Uh, Richard Sherman, Bashad Breeland, as well as Steven Nelson will be discussed later tonight. So we wanted to get you guys a double upload uh, today. Obviously, after we missed yesterday, we want to be making content each and every day for you guys. So if you do want Bears content each and every day of the week, do us a favor. If you're listening on YouTube, drop a like and subscribe. Also, comment what you want to see the Bears do with the rest of their money. They've got about just over $10 million left. Uh, obviously, have to save some for the season uh, as well as signing the rookies. That's going to be important, uh, obviously. But, uh, yeah, and if you're listening on any of the podcasting platforms, do us a favor and subscribe because we're going to be bringing you the best Bears content all off season and all during the 2021-2022 regular season. Uh, each and every day of the week. Sorry, a little bit rusty. We're getting back used to this, Uh, but it feels good to be back on the grind. If you want more content from us, our website's getting fired back up, beardown.com. It's the link in the top of the description. You can see columns, articles, and blogs from our writers. If you would like to see sneak peeks of what we're doing on the podcast, enter our giveaways that we try and do a couple of months a year and have a great way to interact with us and see what's coming. Do us a favor and follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at beardown. And finally, You can find the links to all of our social media pages down in the description. Myself, as well as Parth, our Instagrams, as well as our Twitters. You should definitely check out our Twitters. Uh, You can see Parth talking about the White Sox basically 24-7. And our social media is also where you can see our thoughts on all things National Football League, uh, as well as the entirety of Chicago sports. So be sure to check it out. You can definitely get some good White Sox takes from Parth over there. But Parth Shaw... Feels good to be back. Feels good to be doing this consistently. Feels good to not be held down by school. But any last words before we close this one out? Yeah, it does feel good. Uh, I just looked at where we were ranked last year. Um, it was, we were ranked 22nd, so we could definitely make a little bit of a jump, um, especially after losing, Le- replacing Leno uh, with Jenkins. I think that's a big boost to the offense line. But, yeah, it's nice to get back in this full swing of recording. Um, follow us on Twitter, like Chris said. Uh, lots of White Sox takes on there. Fortunately, their game got postponed today, but go back at it tomorrow. Hopefully we sweep Detroit Tigers and um, the Bears can kick off the season pretty soon because it's taken a very, very long time. I feel like this last month has just been moving by very slow for football. Yeah, it's been pretty slow since the draft. After like, the draft, it's just been so boring. Yeah. It's just like yeah, yeah. Move. I mean, there's not much motivation to record when there's nothing to record exactly. about. But now we're getting back into the swing of things. Like for example, Matt Nagy just came out and said that Fields is the second string quarterback and Foles is the third. And um, Daz Newsom uh, just suffered an injury. In yeah, yeah. I mean, at least now we're getting to the point where there's some news, exactly. some stuff we can discuss and get a little bit spicy. And then obviously, uh, I think we'll be able to hopefully go out to training camp on the weekends here. Uh, once July rolls around. So that's going to be a ton of fun as well. And I'm definitely intrigued to go out there and watch and see what Justin Fields and Dalton and the entire crew is able to do. So all the best content coming to you guys this summer, and we're really excited to bring it to you guys. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Maltby. Uncut episode 138 coming out tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. And as always, stay safe and bear down. We'll see you guys later tonight. And that's pretty much it for us.